Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. Welcome to another Ask the Cheese Man where you can learn about home cheese making and you can ask all your questions. Well, it's lovely to see so many people here today. It's uh, it's a blessing as always. And uh, yeah, lots of people. It's good to see. Now, uh, I'll, before I do all the shout outs, um, I will uh, just give an update. Um, this is episode 129. Um, so, yep, we've got lots there if you want to go, want to go back and, and have a look at them. Um, today's uh, shout out is to Jim Jackson. Thank you, Jim, for supporting the show via YouTube memberships. Um, I really appreciate that. And to all the other patrons and YouTube members, uh, thank you for your ongoing monthly support. I really appreciate it. Uh, another shout out this week is to Joey Risk. I think that's how you pronounce your last name, Joey. Sorry if I've mucked that up. But a big thank you. Joey reached out during the week and asked if he could do any volunteer work for us uh, for helping out the channel, um, editing or anything like that. Now, he also mentioned that he was a pretty good little animator uh, as far as animations for uh, Streamlabs, which is the software I use to live stream here. And he came up with this great little animation. Uh, you can't, I don't, don't know if I can test it. Can I have a look? Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. It's live on stream. So a little cheese wedge you can see there. And it goes into the cheese wheel and it turns into a little coin with my face on it. Very cool. So that's what happens when you do a super chat. Um, the little new little animation from jo uh, Joey. Thank you so much, Joey, for uh, doing that little animation um, uh, as, as some volunteer work for the channel, uh, which is fabulous. So thank you so much for reaching out to us. Um, the cheese video of the week. I'm hoping to get Kefili finished. I know I've already got a Kefili video on the channel, but this is updated to 2019 standards uh, of video production. Uh, is a lot clearer, a lot easier to follow. I've used a new cheddaring process that I have in the last couple of videos as well. So um, that will be going up uh, either this weekend or early during the week. So that'll be good. Um, now a bit of a people are, some people are asking how Kim is, uh, those who have been following regularly, um, we'll let the cat out of the bag. I think it was last week or the week before, uh, that, um, Kim wasn't well. She has been diagnosed with early breast cancer. Um, I know it's not the typical thing you get on a cheese channel, but you know, a lot of people are asking after her. Now, just a little bit of an update. We've seen an oncologist already. Um, and, uh, we've, uh, she's done multiple scans, uh, tests and all that sort of stuff, all the baseline stuff before she starts chemotherapy, um, possibly even as early as, uh, next week or even the end of this week. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and all the scans, uh, are checking for, uh, secondary cancers as well. So hopefully fingers crossed, there's no issues with that. Uh, and we go to see the oncologist again this afternoon um, to find out the results of those scans. So fingers crossed, everything's all good. And uh, Kimmy, I'll be there with you 100% of the way, love. Okay, uh, with all that out of the way, um, great to see everybody here. So some shout outs. We've got Retta Retta. Uh, we've got Arden. G'day, Arden. William. Hello, mate. How are you? Uh, Kratos from Senegal. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, and g'day to you. Uh, Kangamoo, g'day as always. Uh, Aga, g'day mate. How are you? Matthew from the Netherlands. Looks like it's a bit uh, cold over there. That's not so good. We got um, Jaff Lacom. Oh, g'day, Jaff Lacom. Christian, g'day mate. How are you? Patrick uh, says, hello, Gavin and Kim. Hope you're feeling okay, Kim. Uh, well, there's been an update on that. And there's Kimmy. Thank goodness she's there. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't be a show without her. And uh, Craig, g'day, Craig. How are you, mate? Um, pets, I think that's how you say that. Greeting from Hungary. 
Honey. Hello, Gavin. Hello, Honey. Uh, where else are we? Uh, and then any more? Leonardo. G'day, mate. Uh, Ehan. I think that's how you say it. Uh, and Kim says, you're a darling, Mr. Weber. Thank you, Kimmy. <laughs> I try to be. I try to be your support person. And Matthew just popped in. So we've got 32 in the uh, chat at the moment. I think it's 32, roughly. A little ticker doesn't say that, but it'll get there. It takes its time. Oh, and Larry. G'day, Larry. Good to see you, mate. Okay, we've got some questions already. So start throwing them up there uh, for those who have questions. <clears throat> okay, first question was at 8.08 this morning, 20 minutes, 25 minutes before the stream started. Uh, Reda says, can you put video translations in French? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, translating uh, captions into other languages is uh, extremely time-consuming and costly. It costs money to do that, especially because I don't speak French. If I spoke French, yeah, hey, no problems. But I don't, unfortunately. Um, however, there is, in every video, you'll see in the descriptions, uh, probably not this one, I don't do it on live streams, every description has a little link on where the community, if they want to, and I know it's a time-consuming task, but community volunteers who speak multiple languages translate the video. So um, there's a little link to do that. It's very simple to do. Um, uh, it's very self-explanatory for those who have done it before. So if anybody wants to translate any of the how-to videos, you know, the how to make the cheese videos, um, or even the taste tests, I don't mind. Uh, if, if you've got the time and the inclination, then feel free um, to click on that little link in each of the video descriptions and translate into the language of your choice. Now, obviously, I do get to check and have the final say um, because I have had one or two weird translations that were basically spam. They just put spam in there in the translation, but I get the final review and the final approval. And your name actually gets put into the description automatically by YouTube once it gets approved as a translator of that language. So it's there for, uh, uh, for the world to see that you've done a great job. All right, cool. So now moving along from that way, um, where's the second question? Let's have a look. Uh, Matthew says, hey, Gavin. The camembert you made with the stabilised paste, do you think that will be okay for baking? Uh, Matthew, yes, I do. Um, even though the normally it's traditional camembert, but these days a lot of the supermarket uh, camemberts are made uh, using stabilised paste method. Um, and yeah, you can use those for baking as well. So there's no issue there whatsoever. Uh, Arden says, question, some of my straw cheese mats are getting spots of mould. I've run them through the dishwasher, sprayed them with vinegar, but the mould spots persist. Um, so using straw or are you using the bamboo ones? Because straw, I know for us here in Australia, straw ones are very hard to get. Um, if they've got mould spots on them, then you're going to have to replace them. That's what they do. Um yeah, they're fairly cheap. Uh, there's nothing much you can do other than that. Um, I've even tried, I, I even, um, with the bamboo mats that I use, if I'm using bamboo mats, um, I will boil them in the water in the pot with all the other stainless steel utensils. So, and that kills off the molds at least enough for, say, five days uh, when you're doing the draining part, say, if you're doing a mold ripened cheese or something like that. So, I hope that helps. If not, replace them if you can't get it off. Uh, Leonardo says, hi, everyone. Good to arrive on the beginning today, indeed. It's good to see. Hopefully YouTube sent out that little notification to everybody um, so they uh, they get notified of the, the, the live stream. Honey says, uh, here from Mexico, wanted to ask if you've ever used microbial rennet and have you found the difference in curdling from using regular rennet? Okay, well, um, good question. I use two types of vegetarian rennet. I don't use any animal rennet in any of the cheeses that I use. So uh, I use um, uh, fermented F uh, ferment, fermented chymosin, FPC, I think it's called, fermented processed chymosin. Uh, the, the brand name I use is uh, Chimax Plus by 
CHR Hanson, I think they're called. Uh, but Chimax Plus, and we have that on our website as, I think it's just Liquid Vegetarian Rennet. I uh, didn't put it too technical there. And the other one we I, we stock and I use as well as Microbial Rennet, which is made from a fungus. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're both really good rennets. They set very well. Uh, I have never experienced bitterness uh, from using those rennets in cheese, so... There's no big deal. I think it all works. So, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, fill your boots and and, and do them. Um, and regular, I don't know what, regular rennet? I think you're meaning animal rennet. So, no, there's no difference. Okay, uh, Ehan says hi. Hi, Ethan. Matthew, Matthew number two says hello. Um, Honey also says there is also a cheese in Mexico called Requesen, I think. Wonder if you could please make it. I'll have to find that out. I haven't heard of it before. Might have to translate a few videos, but we'll have a look. Okay. Um, g'day to Ryan, who's just turned up, and Dominique. G'day, Dominique. How are you, mate? Good morning, Gav. How are you? Have you ever made Sisfat cheese? Yes. Yes, I have. Uh Hang on, I've got a recipe for it and everything. Let me just find the link, please, mate. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, hopefully the little search. Hey, there we go. All right, so hang on over to the uh, desktop number two. So here we go on little green cheese. There's the recipe for making uh, tis fat. I think uh, anyway the recipe is there i will give you the link hang on i'll stop that don't join the you join the membership here we go copy and let's uh paste that one there we go so there's the link to that um back to the main screen again there we are Whoop. um okay so that's uh that's the recipe for that so um go and enjoy that cheese all right, um, next question. Uh, Ryan says, greetings from Texas. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Patrick says, have you ever used star sand in your cheese making? Uh, no. Uh, star sand is a, a brewing um, sanitizer, uh, and it, you don't need to rinse it or anything. I've used it when I made mead, um, Patrick, but I've never used it in cheese making. That's not to say you can't. I don't know if there are any reasons around that. Um, uh, what's it called? The, um, chemical is, um, uh, sodium, it's not sodium metabisulfate, but that's one of the other ones. Sodium petrosulfate or something, I can't remember. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's safe with cheese making, I probably do. A lot of, uh, commercial cheese makers use a product called Idafor, which is uh, a sanitizer as well, which is safe for the cheese making uh, community and um, and the commercial, it, it just kills off all bad bacteria and stuff like that. So try um, Ida 4 is the best one. If you're going to get into that sort of thing, I just basically use white vinegar. Um, and uh, for anything really stubborn, I use a very weak bleach solution um, when I need to, uh, which isn't very often, which isn't very often. And I boil all the stainless steel stuff. Um, Matthew said, any chance of giving some tips, making a video or making a great cheese board slash plate? It's actually been on my to-do list for ages, Matthew, and I just haven't got around to it. Um, cheese plate. Yeah, why not? Sounds interesting. I think people will watch that. Most definitely. Thank you for the suggestion there, Matthew. Um, Pets says, I'm trying to make a cheese for the first time yesterday and it didn't form any curd, stayed completely liquid. Could be the supermarket milk be the problem. Indeed. Um, yes, so when it comes down to milk, not all milks are equal. Make sure that you stay away from milk that is ultra-pasteurised or UHT processed. Uh, can't be ultra-heat treated. Um, it's best to get... Um, well, what I use on a regular basis is um, pasteurised but unhomogenised milk. 
And the pasteurisation process is the normal 72 degrees Celsius one. I had to contact the manufacturer to find that out. In fact, I went and visited them, and you can see a video on that. I think, Kim, if you want to, um, can you pop the link up to our visit to Inglenook Dairy? And uh, I think I've explained something about the way they process the milk there. Um, so, yeah, so that, that uh, the milk is definitely uh, the problem usually. Um, have you added any calcium chloride if it, the milk has been pasteurised? That that would be my next question to you. If you haven't, then that would probably result in a very bad curd set or no curd set at all. Um, but, yeah, try different types of milk and make sure that they're not ultra-pasteurised. Um, or UHT. Okay, Leonardo says, Gavin, my cheese tends to develop uh, some whey inside the vacuum bag. Is there anything I can do about that? Uh, they are stored after they are touch dry. Uh, yeah, cheeses tend to do that a little. It depends on how much you think is um, some. So if you, in the vacuum bag, if you see just little lines of whey, once you take it out of the bag, it, it's no big deal. Um Usually they stay fairly dry in there. Um, it just means that there's more whey trapped in the curds than there should be. So I would check the... Uh, when you cut the curds, um, make sure the cuts are the right size for that specific cheese, Leonardo. Uh, that's one thing can hold up the whey if the curd size is a little bit too big. It holds too much whey and it seeps out during maturation. Uh, you know, back in the old days, before we used vacuum packing and all that, and when they were um, uh, matured on natural boards and stuff, on pine boards, then basically all that excess moisture just goes into the pine boards. Uh, because we're using vacuum packing, it's got nowhere to go, basically, as it dries out. So, yeah. Uh, John said, I knew my cheese antennas were waving. Uh, nice to see you here, John. Thank you very much, mate. Um Arden says, bamboo. All right, yeah, so the bamboo ones. Throw them away, get a new one. They're only about a dollar each. It's no big deal uh, as far as your mats go. Uh, John says, may the cheese be with you all. Indeed. Uh, Ryan says, very new to the hobby. Um, what do you think is the best place to start? Always a great question. Uh, we get that uh, quite regularly. So the best place to start is, um, well, I suppose what I did. Well, let's go on a cheese making course. Try and find one in your local area. If not, I've got a very good course uh, online that helps beginners. Um, it's called the Curd Nerd Academy. And Kim, if you can put the link up to the Curd Nerd Academy just up on the uh, Little Green Workshops um, cheese making course page, just pop that up. Um, that were fabulous, and that will help out Ryan. So there's a course there. Uh, it's not free, but it's not very expensive so you'll learn or you can go through all the youtube videos and learn from there um get yourself a good book i've got a good book it's called keep calm and make cheese uh and kimmy can put the link to that up as well ryan so that's some places to start but start on softer cheeses first then work your way up to hard as you um get more confident with your cheese making manuel manuel g'day mate you're a regular um hi gavin and kim hope you're well yes we are thanks mate Hacker Russo says hello. Lovely to see you. Stefan says hello. G'day, Stefan. And Justin says, can you explain the limits of using existing cheese to inoculate a new batch? What are the limits? Okay. So many people ask this question. Uh, existing cheese, the, you will not get the starter cultures from an existing cheese that has been matured um, to inoculate a new batch of cheese. What you will get is any moulds that, if it's a mould ripened cheese like blue mould or uh, white mould, sometimes that works, or definitely red mould from a washed rind cheese, will transfer over to a new cheese. Okay, um, so, uh, and the reason that is the starter cultures, the lactic bacteria within the cheese when you initially add them, um, as the cheese ages and more acid gets produced uh, within the cheese, they tend to die off and turn into enzymes which um, provide the flavours and do the, pro uh, the, the two processes in cheese making called proteolysis, which is the breakdown of the proteins into flavours, and uh, uh, lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fats within the cheese. Uh, and then they die off and they turn into enzymes. Um, 
So the, those cultures will not be live in your cheese unless it's a soft cheese. So yogurt, you can readily use the cultures uh, from one batch of yogurt to another because they're still live. However, with harder cheeses, you just can't do that. Uh, you can use raw milk to get around that, um, or you can use um, uh, buttermilk if you can get it, cultured buttermilk. You can use that as a starter culture, uh, but some of those are, are fairly dead by the time you get them anyway. Um, yeah, so that's it's best to buy some uh, freeze-dried um, starter cultures like we sell, the direct back yet in inoculated. Um, so get yourself some of those, Justin. Okay, John says 161,000. Uh, yeah, so he's talking about the little counter at the back. That's how many subs subscribers we've got for the channel at the moment. 1,000 steps at all. It's about 1,000 a week at the moment, John, which is absolutely fabulous. Okay, Croc AU says how to extend the shelf life of Polish-style white cottage cheese. Will that be Polish? Polish style white cottage cheese. Gav, you're a dork. Um, uh, make sure it's salted when you make it. Uh, it will only last for about two weeks. Fresh cheese does not last much past um, two weeks, usually two, three weeks tops before it starts growing mold on it. Reason it grows mold on it is because the cheese is an ideal medium for bacteria and mold growth, uh, especially when it's so moist like cottage cheese. Now, for those who have watched for a while, um, you will know that the um, cottage cheese is my nemesis cheese. I have not been able to make it. Um, I'm thinking that uh, because most of the recipes I've seen say use raw milk, very hard to get your hands on. Um, but we do have a supply of uh, raw milk per se from um, Made by Cow. So I'll probably pop down the shops and grab some of that here in Australia. Uh, which is just high-pressure uh, treated milk, um, which hasn't been pasteurised, so it should set it. Uh, Dominic said, where is your video for Tis Fat? Um, try to make it from your recipe, but it doesn't but doesn't know how it looks or tastes. It's hard to know if I've done a good job. Um, I'm heard, I've heard you can grill it like halloumi. Um, no, I haven't done a video for it. Because uh, that was back in the old days. So, yeah, I could do that. Remembering that um, I've only ever made it once. And I don't know what it's supposed to taste like either. Because I don't come from Israel. Uh, which is where the cheese originates from. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I'll give it a go, Dominique. Like I do everything, mate. Uh, Arden says, just one more question. I make a filly from your previous video with my fresh raw goat's milk. As per your suggestion, uh, to me, for newbie hard pressed cheese. Uh, taste tested last week and loved it. It has some small brown spots. Not sure where they're coming from. Is that mould? I've been periodically wiping down with a brine solution. Love, Kefili. Um Thank you. It's so yummy. Sliced and then just microwave for a few seconds till gooey. Yeah, indeed. Um... It is a great cheese, and those brown spots, yeah, are mould, and they're fine. Uh, the, because of the wiping down of the mould, that cheese tends to get uh, brown spots on it, which is okay. There's no problems. It tastes amazing. Um, Kim's put the link for the best types of cow's milk, which is great. A little addition there. Thank you, honey. Um, trying to find my spot where I am. Uh, John says, like he's yelling at me, in capitals. Gavin, I made your Parmesan cheese and I cannot get it to cure. What's wrong? Beats me, mate. Um, you haven't given much more information at all. Can't get it to cure. In what way? Is it too dry, too moist? Uh, didn't knit together? There's no information there. So try again, John, and don't use all caps. That would be nice. Matt says, hey, Gavin, any update on the Colby Jack cheese recipe, something? Uh, recipe, Colby Jack cheese making recipe. No, I haven't done it yet, Matt. Kim's been not well. Right, I've got a super chat there. Uh, great. I've got to figure out how to turn it off. So then I've got a new phone. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, it's from Occult Nino. G'day, Occult Nino. And the little thing didn't trigger. 
I don't know where it's gone. But Occult Nino says, thanks, Gavin Kim. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate your super chat and your kind $5. There you go. There's your drifting G's coin. Thank you so much. Finally, it came up. There it is. Lovely. All righty. Um, right, now back to the question from Matt, I think. It says, hey, Gavin, any update on the Colby Jack cheese recipe video? No, there isn't. Um, I have not made it as yet. Uh, Jordan says, hello, Gavin and all curdners. Thank you, Jordan. Yes, hello to you too, mate. Uh, Kim's put up the link for the Inglenook Dairy visit, which is cool. Um, Pets says, I did our calcium chloride. It was ESL milk. ESL. What does ESL stand for? It won't hurt. Um, Justin says, why don't you put a video on how to make chirpy cheese? What the heck is chirpy cheese? It'd not be anything rude. Uh, chirpy cheese with spelt C-H-H-U-R-P-I. Traditional cheese consumed from the Himalayan regions of Nepal, Bhutan and Tibet. Soft and a hard variety. Okay. It looks like it's the hardest cheese on the planet there. So it says. Made with 100% yak's milk. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Well, there's not many yaks around here. It actually says it can be prepared in a local dairy or at home with buttermilk. Buttermilk is boiled and the solid mass is obtained and is separated from the whey as wrapped and hung in a thin cloth. It is rather like Italian ricotta, which is also made in whey. All right, so it is made from yak's milk usually. Don't have any yaks apparently, so can't really help you out there. But good suggestion, Justin. If I ever stumble across a yak in my travels, I'll give it a quick milk and I'll make some chirpy. Cool. Uh, Steve says, Gav, what's the easiest cheese to make for a beginner? Um, for a beginner is uh, a ricotta or paneer. Those two cheeses are very easy uh, to make for a beginner. They're the easiest soft cheeses to make. It's milk. You get it close to boiling point. Add vinegar to it or citric acid. And bingo boingo, you got yourself some cheese and you drain that off and then you can add um, salt to it if you wish and see how you go and eat it. It's very nice. Um, great on a lasagna. Oh, in between the layers. So nice. Uh, but don't add too much acid. The more acid you use, the more rubbery the cheese gets. So don't um, add too much acid. Just add a little bit at a time until you start to see it curdle. Um, but there are uh, videos for ricotta and, and stuff like that on the channel. So go and check them out. Um, Patricia says, hello, Gavin, Kim and Curd Nerds. A little late. Hello from Halifax, Nova Scotia today. Looking forward to catching up with everybody. Thank you, Patri Patricia, for turning up. That's fantastic to see you again, mate. Uh, Jordan says, I just started to make kombucha, fermented tea. Uh, is there any issues with making cheese and kombucha? Uh, will there be, I'll turn my phone off, that'll be good. Will there be any issues with the moulds from cheese and the bacteria yeast from the butch? Uh, probably not. So because the kombucha uses, what, from what I experience anyway, a thing called a SCOBY, a symbiotic uh, cult colony of beneficial yeast or something like that, um, it's a little, it looks like a jellyfish, a little jellyfish thing you stick into your, uh, into the tea and it ferments and it tastes very nice. Kombucha is a big thing here in Australia, very healthy for you um, and tastes very nice on a, uh, on a warm day, cold kombucha, delicious. Um, as far as any issues, as long as the kombucha's um, in a fermenting vessel or something like that, you can do versions where you put in a big jar and then put a tea towel over the top. I've seen people prefer to use airlocks like they do with um, like the mead video that I made. Um, and then you wouldn't have too many issues. I don't think the yeast will contaminate the cheese, so you'd be pretty cool. Kangamoo says, The Curd Nerd Academy is excellent. Highly recommended. Thank you, Kangamoo. I know you've done it um, and enjoyed it. Uh, and, yeah, you, I think you learn a lot there. It's a pretty good resource, I think. Took me a long time to put it together, tell you what. 
N.W. Stephen um, says, Hi, Gavin. Mark here. Oh, hi, Mark. Um, I am thinking of making a horseradish and bacon bit flavour. My question is, should I hydrate the bacon bits before mixing them in the cheese? No, I wouldn't. Um, bacon bits are usually uh, uh, dried out, so it's a bit like jerky, a little bit crunchy too. I would leave them dry when I mix them in. I wouldn't re rehydrate them at all. Uh, John says, chirpy cheese, is that like blackbird pie? Um, need to make a cheese bowl, put in chirpies, pop on the top and have a baked chirpy cheese. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, okay. Um, this is another question. Um, Justin said again, can you make chirpy cheese? You did that. Um, Arden says, love your book. Keep calm and make cheese. Thank you, Arden. Appreciate it, mate. And Kim's put up the link to the book if anybody wanted to buy it. Um, those who buy internationally don't pay the GST uh, goods and services tax here in Australia. So you actually get it cheaper than what the listed price is once you go to the checkout. Um, the tax is taken off if you're international. If you're in Australia, you got to pay the tax. Um, uh, Anthony says, did you look at the stir, mate? And that blue cheese is awesome. Thanks for your help. The, your vids pushed my interest from just that into actions. Um, yeah, the stir mate looked pretty good. I tried to get one here in Australia, um, Anthony, but I could, just couldn't get it. Um, they wouldn't ship it to Australia. So, uh, it looked fairly robust, which was good. So, um, anybody, you can go and check that out somewhere on YouTube or whatever. It's called a stir mate. It's pretty good. Um, Osger, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Gavin, you have three different camembert recipes, which you suggest. Yes, I do. That's a good statement. Um, you can try any of them. Um, so there's the traditional one that I made with raw milk, uh, which was really gooey, which is what it was supposed to be like. There's the stabilised paste one, which is, uh, if you like a firmer um, camembert-style cheese. There's the little bear one, which is less, less gooey because it's used uh, with um, pasteurised milk. Uh, and... I think there's a very original one, which I think I use pasteurised milk in as well. So there are different recipes. You can try them all and find out which one you like the best. That's why I put them up there. Um, there is no one single recipe for bloomy white mould cheese. Adam Weber, shout out from Germany to Australia. And uh, it's good to see Adam Weber in the chat because he is my son all the way and he lives in Germany with his family. Um Thank you, son, for your shout out. I was surprised that you didn't do a super chat, you stingy bugger. So anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you, son, for joining the chat and great to see you watching the stream. There's a wave to you and the kiddies. Uh, Matt says, do the holes in Swiss cheese affect the flavour and texture or is it just a result of the gas production? Well, the holes are just that. They're voids in the cheese. Um they are created using a bacteria called Propionic Shimani. Propionic Shimani is a specific cult, a bacteria that you add to the milk when you make Swiss-style cheeses and you want eye formation. That's what the holes are called. They're called eyes. Um, it does affect the flavour. It actually makes the milk taste, sorry, makes the cheese taste a bit nutty. Um, and that's where you get that nutty Swiss flavour. Um, so yes, the bacteria that produces the eyes also produces the nutty flavour and texture, the really tight texture in the, um, in the Swiss style cheese. There you go. Chaotic Sword says, hello Gavin, I'm a bit late. <laughs> nice to see you anyway. Uh, Croc AU says, can, oh, I can guide you to the method that will let you make cottage cheese from shop milk in Australia. Fantastic. Shoot me an email. I'm always up for cottage cheese recipes that actually work. Um, you can go to the About page of the channel. So go to the Channel page. There's an About tab, and you'll be able to contact me via email there. Or alternatively, there's another way. If you go to... Eh, where is it? I'm going to find the bloody page. Here we are. If No, wrong camera. The dog's not there. She's escaped. Um, 
there we go. If you go to Little Green Cheese, there's a contact me page. You can leave a voicemail, which I listen to. Don't always reply to them, but I listen to them. And there's a little contact page just there. Um, so you can send me anything you want to. Uh, recipes, the like. Anyway, so Little Green Cheese. It's down, down there, see? Little Green Cheese. Cool. Um, the next one... And thank you, Croc AU, if you do shoot it through. That'd be great. Patricia says, I made the stabilised paste camembert. Man, is it ever a hard cheese. Not difficult, just not soft. Tastes good, but I was surprised. Yes, it is. It can be very hard. Um, in fact, I made one the other day using raw milk, uh, using the stabilised paste method, and it was like a hockey puck. Um, I've tried one that has been covered in mould. We had it in the kitchen fridge because I didn't think it worked. And it softened quite nicely. Not softy, soft, gooey type, but it had softened, Patricia. And that was just over time. Let the penicillium candidum get in there and start... Um, um, oh, what's it called? The process. Proteolysis. It breaks down the proteins. It makes the cheese softer. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. Honey said another question. I tried to make Oaxaca cheese. Milk was slightly sour, and when I put it in the hot water, the cream from the cheese separated, and I couldn't get it to stretch. What went wrong? Ooh. Um, what went wrong? Uh, did you follow the recipe that I made? Uh, would be my first question. Um, uh, but yeah, if you didn't, then uh, you've got to make sure that the pH of the curds before you even put it in the water uh, is between 5.3 and 5 before the cheese will stretch. Um, and usually when it's at that pH, it won't separate at all. Uh, so try the recipe. Kim, if you can, um, pop up the link to the, um, uh, to the Oaxaca cheese video, please. Spelled O A X A C A. Okay. Um, so, honey, hopefully that'll help you out. Uh, Matthew says ESL stands for extra shelf life or ultra pasteurized. Well, that was the issue then. Thank you, Matthew, for clearing that up. So, whoever the person was, I've lost their name, um, who said their milk wouldn't set, that's the reason. Ultra pasteurized will not work. Um, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Honey said it didn't melt nicely. Oh, that's a bonus. Um, Zolt says, hello, greetings from Hungary. G'day, Zolt. Um, hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm not very good at pronunciations. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Patrick said, ESL or ultra pasteurized milk is produced by thermally processing using conditions between those used for traditional high temperature. Yeah, so UHT milk or ultra pasteurized does not set a curd. Um, so that's no good. John says, sorry, Gavin. That's okay, mate. Thank you. I know you're not shouting now. That's okay. You can use capitals at the start of my name. That's okay. Only <laughs> joking, mate. Uh, John says, ESL, uh, fresh milk between high temperature, short, and UHT, longer storage life. No, nah, still won't set a curd. Anyway, um, Zolt says, yes, using ESL, the milk was pasteurised between 100 so No, it says bald. Now, once you get over 100 degrees, well, once you get over 70 degrees, 72 or something, the milk, the calcium in the milk starts to denature and is not present to form the casein structure, the casein matrix. It's all very sci-fi. Um, the casein matrix... And you will find that um, the, the curd won't set. So the matrix won't come together when you add the rennet. Um, okay, Crocker, you says, use three litres of Coles full cream milk and Coles brand light sour cream. Uh, it's got no gelatin added and got live cultures pre present. <clears throat> Heat the milk to 40, add two tablespoons of cream and mix into the milk till dissolve, leave it for 24 hours, does it go sour, cut with a curd knife, heat to 40, turn it off and set for an hour, strain in cheesecloth and press with three kilos weight and you've got a classic Polish cottage cheese. Very nice. Thank you, Croc AU. 
I'll keep that after the chat has finished. Um, uh, Robert says, don't tell Nintendo I counterfeit de blows. Don't get it. Um, Matus, I think that's how you say it, says, hello from Brazil. G'day, Matus. Um, Manuel says, um, what's the texture for Crescenza? Um, the texture, it's a uh, firmish ish. Uh, that's the one that had mold on the outside. Yeah, look, it was uh, a bit like uh, it's smooth. It's not grainy. It's just smooth. It's not rubbery. Um, what do I, I, I couldn't compare it to anything else that I'd ever tasted. But yeah, it's it's nice. It's not grainy and it's not runny, um, but it's just a nice firmish sort of cheese. Um, Kevin says, isn't ricotta a form of Italian cottage cheese? Yeah, I suppose it is, uh, in a way. Um, Kevin, you're right. Uh, Patricia says, Gavin, would Gouda make, made from 100% goat's milk, still be considered Gouda? Um, yeah, Patricia, I think so, because over in the Netherlands, they use um, goat's milk as well to produce Gouda. That's what they sell it as anyway. Um, I think it's uh, Freco, I think is the company that um that make it but yeah i yeah i would still consider a gouda it'll taste a little bit different we had um kim and i had a a goat's milk gouda from the netherlands uh and it had been aged for a year and my goodness it was delicious absolutely amazing blew my mind delicious um kim just put a link up to the um, oh three minutes ago to queso Oaxaca, which is the Mexican string cheese, and you can watch that over at that link. Nolan has been deleted by Kim, obviously a naughty Nolan. Uh, Kim says, Nolan, more information required if you are a genuine cheesemaker, please. Um, Nolan says, I'm French, so I don't speak in English. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, Nolan, <laughs> I don't speak French, so I won't be able to translate. Kevin says, not cheese related, but can I make yogurt in an instant pot pressure cooker? Um, oh, where is it? Without a yogurt setting. Uh, depends on the heat. So the temperature usually is a, um, about 40 degrees Celsius overnight, um, between thir uh, 35 and 40. Um, Kevin, if you can get your, your pot thing, to sit at that temperature, then yeah, your yogurt will set okay. Um, uh, B Wayne says, um, just stop by 40 minutes in. Hope all is well and things are progressing um, medically. Yep, um, just go and watch the replay, mate, once, you, uh, once you're finished and you'll see what's going on. Um, Zebulark, I think that's how you pronounce it. If you accidentally open a wax cheese, can you reseal it? Yes, indeed, you can. Just melt the wax and put more wax on it. Easy peasy. Um, but says the Woodworks says, I live in the USA and and wondering if I could substitute some whole milk <clears throat> with some heavy whipping cream for a higher fat content on a three gallon cheddar batch. Um, yeah, it won't be cheddar anymore. Uh, <clears throat> depends on, so cheddar is normally made with milk that is about, uh, 5% fat or between 3.8 and 5. Um, so any higher than that, it won't have the same cheddar, um, texture and style. You can use the process. You'll get a different cheese, but it, it won't be cheddar. Um, Sean says, hi, Gavin. I had a double cream blue cheese what makes it double cream <laughs> uh <laughs> more cream <laughs> would be the answer so it's got more fat in it they add in cream to the milk to give it a higher fat content that's what it is um um nolan says wants to know about cooked pressed pasta Uh, pasta falada cheese maybe so like mozzarella um kim try the um pull up the link to the traditional mozzarella i think that's what he's asking for 
Okay. Um, Mark says, uh, wondering where I can get the horizontal curd cutter. Um, hang on, mate. I'll just pull up the link to that and I'll shoot it. It's made by my um, good woodworking friend, Steve Benz. Over, and he only ships to the US, so I don't, uh, you're from Michigan. Yes, that's fine. I will find you the link. Um, it's in one of my videos. Two seconds. Videos, videos, videos. Curd Cuddy. There we are. In the description somewhere, there's a link. There we are. It's all quiet. Talk amongst yourselves. That's fine. Oh, there we go. One link. There we go. And the coupon code gives me a little bit of um, of the uh, benefits of that. Steve gets the lion's share, of course, because he made it. So that's cool. <coughs> okay. Um, Nolan says, it's been two weeks and there's still no crust is this normal? Uh, pasta means paste. Um, in French, pâté pressed culture, like comté. Um, two weeks. All right. So uh, comté just does it has a rind. Um, the rind will dry out over time. Nolan, I hope you can understand me. But uh, yeah. Um, Raiden says, hey, Gavin, what happened to the comfy armchair live streams? Um, is this way nicer? I like this better because I'm kind of like in front of you and you can't see my big fat belly. So that would be one of the reasons. Um, but if you really want a, a, a look at the, there you go, there's the comfy chair. Um, usually the dog sits there, the cheese dog, Holly. Um, but yeah, if you really want to, there you go. Um Anyway, uh, so mozzarella, but uh, yeah, so there's no more questions. What time is it? Oh, it's only 17 minutes past the hour. If anybody has any more questions, then shoot them through, and I'm sure we can help out. Okay. Um, no questions. Um, not sure what we are going to do. Hopefully people are feverishly typing. If you don't have any more questions, that's fine. What we can do, we can end the show 10 minutes early and um, store them up for next time. Um, but, uh, yeah, big thanks to everybody who submitted questions during the show. Um, I appreciate it. Um, Patricia has asked, how's Ben going? Um, very good, Patricia. Um, he um, is... Under control now. I remember I told everybody at the start of the year that Ben had a, a DVT um, in one of his legs and uh, now he's just on warfarin for quite a while, um, Patricia, um, until uh, the yeah, there was a condition that he had called... Um, no, I can't remember. Kim will have to put it up. Um, but, uh, yeah, he had a blood disorder and... Um, it seems to be going away. It's a transient blood disorder. So uh, we'll have tests in 30 minutes and uh, 30 minutes in um, uh, six months. He'll have another blood test and that'll decide whether he goes off the warfarin and, and he's not susceptible anymore. So we'll see how he goes. But yeah, he's doing very well. Very healthy lad now. Um, in fact, yesterday me and him were, um, I bought a new drone, um, uh, a Mavic Mini just on the market for beginners um, because Kim and I are going to travel around a little bit um, while she's recovering and um, fly the drone and take some good footage. But me and him were flying it yesterday out in the park. It was great fun. Nolan says thanks. I hope we were able to help Nolan. Um, Crocker uses vacuum sealing cottage cheese for shelf life extension. You could do that. You'll have to put it in a container, of course. Um, and that, and then put it in a vacuum pack bag, um, and then suck the life out of it, and get rid of all the oxygen. And maybe it would last a bit longer. But make sure it's still stored in um, uh, in the fridge, four degrees Celsius. 
She'll keep any moulds. Hopefully there's none in there. Oh, we've got lots of questions coming in now. There's, there was a little bit. There's a 20-second delay between what I say and what you see. Um, okay, so Karen says, I recently made Petite Blue. It's very soft. Can you recommend another blue that would finish more crumbly for salads and such? Um, yeah, Karen, um, try the... Uh, well, I suppose it was a bit of a failure because it didn't turn out what it, what it was supposed to be. Um, the cam blue that I made, um, that was quite crumbly. Another crumbly one is um, the farmhouse cheddar blue. Try that one. Very, very nice. It crumbles um, if you you know give it a bit of mushing in your fingers, and uh, that'd be great for salads. So try the try the um, farmhouse cheddar blue. Try that one. Um, Matt says, any plans to make another marbled style cheese? I loved your marble cheddar. Um, yeah, well, I was going to have plans to do a Colby Jack, which the Colby will be like yellowy and the Monterey Jack's usually a bit white, but, um, uh, it's all taken time at the moment. Um, I've been taking Kim to multiple, um, visits to the doctor, the, the hospital and the, the treatment that she's getting is an hour away. So I've got to drive, we drive an hour, wait around for the specialist and all that sort of stuff. And then when she starts chemo, we'll have even less time. So, um, yeah, look, I'm trying to get to uh, at least uh, one cheese a fortnight at the moment. I'm still getting a video up, whether it be a taste test or whatever. But if I start to struggle, I'll let you know um, to uh, manage everybody's expectations. Um, uh, Bob says, uh, hey, Gavin, I'm still having trouble getting white mould to grow. Can't seem to get a complete coverage. I'm not sure what's going on there, Bob. Um, the last, God knows how many um, cheeses that I've made, um, I seem to get a complete coverage, no problems at all. Um, maybe add a little bit more penicillium uh, candidum, just a tad more. Uh, and that may help you out in your milk. So maybe it's not growing enough. But the moisture really has to be, uh, humidity has to be quite high for that initial uh, 14 days growth or, or getting the, the entire thing covered. And do make sure that you turn it uh, regularly, at least every day in that first 14 days, because uh, you won't get a complete coverage without turning it. Because, and plus the cheese will start to ooze in between the mat and you're in, in very hard to get it off. And when you do pull it off, it rips off the um, the mould uh, layer and st that sticks to the mat. So yeah, that, you're going to turn it absolutely every day. Uh, Zarana says, um, hi, Gavin. Can I make a fresh cheese with large holes? Unfortunately not. Uh, fresh cheeses don't lend, lend to being uh, created with holes in it. Um, you'll need to make something like a Swiss cheese uh, that ages for at least three, three months. It takes at least three months for the eye development to happen correctly. Um, so no, you won't be able to do that. Kevin said, how is book number two coming? <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a running gag, I suppose. Uh, it's not. Production has halted at the moment. Um, if I do find some time, then I'll work on it. But I just haven't. Sorry, mate. And sorry to all the curd nerds where I promised, God knows, like six months ago to get these uh, the recipes out. Um, but yeah, I'll work on it if I do get some time. Um, Leonardo says, uh, made the real mozzarella last week. It's magic when it starts to stretch. Thanks for the experience. No problems at all, Leonardo. I'm glad it stretched for you. But yeah, the traditional mozzarella is so much easier to make, in my humble opinion, than the 30-minute mozzarella, would you believe, or the quick mozzarella, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. Uh, Larry says, if I press a cheese at a higher weight, will that affect the brining time? Uh, yes, it will, um, Larry. It will affect the brining time uh, because it is closer knit. So you'll find with Parmesans, that I, when I make a Parmesan-style cheese or Romano, what have you, the brining time's a lot longer because it takes a lot more time for the salt to absorb into the cheese. Um, so yes, if you do press it at a higher weight, then brine it maybe an hour, maybe two longer. 
Uh, Kim says uh, Ben had antiphospholipid syndrome. Yes, there you go. Which is a blood disorder that makes the blood clot more than it should. Um, which is the opposite to... Um, oh, goodness me. What's the other... Where people bleed out all the time. What's it called? Haemophiliac. That's it. Um, Joanna says, um, Hi, I haven't been around for a long time. It's lovely to see you though, Joanna. Uh, life issues. Tell me about them. Um, about a year ago, I suggested making a cheddar using various bacteria to create holes. You nicknamed it Holy Cheddar. Did you try it? No, I didn't. Sorry, to be brutally honest. Um, I have not got around to it yet. I could add, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool actually. Adding, so make a cheddar. Add Propionic Shimani to it. I'm writing this down. And see what happens. That would be interesting. Even a, a, Actually, a farmhouse cheddar would probably tend to work better because it has natural fishes through the cheese, um, like when I made that uh, farmhouse cheddar blue. So use a stir curd cheddar recipe and uh, add Propionic Shimani to it. I think you would get uh, a fairly holy sort of cheese. That would be pretty good. Um, oh, but good suggestion. Thanks, Joanna. Um, that's four minutes to go. Um, we've got a few questions. I'll get into it. Hang on. Um, Patricia says, I like to make the Bloomy Goat blue. If I use the Mad Millie packet of culture slash, slash uh, penicillin rope 40, um, how much Mad Millie would you recommend? Um, one of those sachets for four litres of milk, Patricia. And yet they do work very well. Um, Karen says, thanks. No problems, Karen. Uh, Patricia says, isn't Stilton a crumbly blue cheese? Kind of. It's more on the creamy side. Uh, depends on how long you age it for, Patricia. Um, the um, Shropshire blue was crumbly. Uh, it's probably more crumbly if you're into a crumbly cheese for salads. So I can't remember who answered the, asked that question. But uh, yeah, you could even try the Shropshire blue. That's a good one. Bradley says, Gavin, you're a champ. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Bradley. Appreciate it. Uh, Matt says, I really want to make provolone picante, but the long process is intimidating. Is it worth making and did you enjoy the process? I enjoyed the process. Um, I didn't think it was going to work to start with, but once I got one up and a little bag, <laughs> it, it was very tasty. It was nice. I wish I had made a bigger one, really. Um, that's what I'd do if I did it again. Matt said, take your time, Gav. We understand life comes first. I wish you and Kim the best. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Kim says, I'll make sure Gavin continues with the cheese making over the next few months as it's relaxing for him and we all know he loves it. Thanks, darling. Appreciate it. Um, Kim's giving me the wrap up, but I'll get into the last one. Stig Garcia says, hi, Gavin. Two of my cheeses have been developing gas whilst in the fridge and swelling up. They're a mix of mesophilic and thermophilic cultures. Is this normal? I'm trying to develop my own recipe. No, it's not normal unless the mesophilic you used was an aromatic mesophilic, which will have gas producing bacteria in it. Um, sounds like uh, it may be early blown, uh, the cheese or even late blown. Um, you will need to get some loose, uh, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember. It's made with egg whites. Um, <laughs> The stuff you add in and it stops late-blown cheese. Um, but, yeah, it sounds like too much gas production. Uh, John says, and you get to eat up all that cheese as well and everybody is happy. Thanks, John. Yes, of course, John, I'm not silly. <laughs> she is not. Okay, um, Kim's given us the wind-up. Um, where are we? Um, yep, so... Uh, if you want to uh, buy any gear from the shop, then uh, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Hang on, where is it? I will bring up the store page. There it is. Oops. So Little Green Workshops, that's what you're looking for. And we've got a cheese section and we ship all product, product globally, except to a few countries where I'm not allowed to. And you can get kits, moulds, cultures, rennet, equipment, uh, cheese baskets, ingredients, some books. We've got some books and, of course, all the merch um, that I wear on the show that you don't even see. Keep calm and make cheese. That's it. 
Um, but you'll see that. Uh, Lysolac, that's what Patricia, Patricia says, is stuff for late blowing cheese. So Lysolac if you um, have issues with the milk. Anyway, um, LN says, hi, John. Who's John? Must be Gavin. Um, first time watching from Sydney, Australia. Just wanted to watch, watch your homemade style Parmesan cheese. You convinced me to try it. No problems at all. Um, and don't forget, uh, you can have a look at the merch shelf down below if you want to buy any T-shirts and stuff. They're cheaper to ship to the US and Canada than they are to Australia. Shipping to Australia is crazy, but I bought some because I like them and I like to uh, wear them. Um, and if you want to support the show, you can hit the join button below or there's some links to Patreon and there's lots of financial members in the chat and I really do appreciate them supporting us month on month. Anyway, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate it. And um, uh, without your questions, there wouldn't be a show, honestly. But we will be back here next Wednesday, depending on when the oncologist says Kim starts chemotherapy. So look out. I will schedule it if it's on. If it's not, don't worry. We'll be back the week after because apparently the effects. So we've been told from the chemo is only... For the first week or so, she feels pretty crappy. So um, I won't do the show without moderation. Um, and Kim is extremely good at it. And she's lovely. So um, if we're back next Wednesday, then that's great. But if we're not, then you'll see the scheduled one if you go to the channel when the next live one is. Or just go to the live page and you'll see when the next one's scheduled for. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. Appreciate your time as always. Um, love to you all and uh, may all your cheeses be firm and uh, your curd set properly. All right. See you later, curd nerds.